Hey guys, so I am super excited. I have filmed a bunch of videos beforehand, bought myself bought myself a few weeks of uh, time after the baby, at least. Um, so I, this will probably the, be the last video I have scheduled. Um, so if you don't hear from me next week or the week after that, I apologize. Um, I'll do my best to uh, update you guys or film something to post next week. Um, Probably the next thing you'll see from me is maybe like how my birth went because I'm nine months pregnant right now and by the time you see this I've had my baby so uh, maybe by then I'll have something filmed but forgive me if I don't. Today's video is a request uh, from Lucas Kuhn. I believe that's how you pronounce your last name. It's K-H-U-N. It was a really, really pretty last name, but I apologize if I'm butchering that. Uh, but thank you, Lucas, for the request. Um, this is about the serial killers. Sorry, I had a total brain fart. <laughs> Leonard Thomas Lake and, and Charles N.G. And um, I will go into that now. If you are new here, I don't normally film and um, read straight from notes unedited. But I'm doing so to quickly get videos done and scheduled out. So I apologize for the uh, crappy way I'm reading this, but this is the information I have. Um, Leonard Thomas Lake, who was also known as Leonard Hill and a variety of other aliases, was an American serial killer. Charles N.G. was a convicted Hong Kong American serial killer. Um, during the mid-1980s, both men are believed to have raped, tortured, and murdered an estimated 11 to 25 victims at a remote cabin in California. Uh, now, Leonard Lake was born in San Francisco, California. He was reportedly a bright child, but after uh, continually photographing his sister's nude, which his grandmother apparently encouraged, he became obsessed with pornography. He reportedly extorted his sisters to perform sexual acts. He also collected mice and killed them by dissolving them in chemicals in the same manner he would later dispose of his human victims' corpses. Um, after attending high school, he enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps in 1964, and he served two tours of duty in the Vietnam War. During this period, it was when he was first diagnosed with schizoid personality disorder, um, after what was termed a delusional breakdown, he received psychotherapy, excuse me, and in 1971, a medical discharge. I'm so sorry. I have really bad acid reflux. And it's like bubbly right here. Lake settled in San Jose and enrolled at San Jose State University, but dropped out after one semester upon becoming enamored with the hippie lifestyle in San Francisco. He moved to a commune there and briefly married in 1975. The marriage dissolved after his wife discovered he was making and appearing in amateur, pornogra amateur pornographic movies, usually involving bondage or sadomasochism. Um, Charles N.G. was born in British Hong Kong, the son of a wealthy uh, executive and his wife. As a child... NG was harshly disciplined and abused by his father. And as a teenager, he was described as a troubled loner who was expelled from several schools. He moved to the United States on a student visa in 1978 and studied biology at the College of Notre Dame in Belmont, California. He dropped out after one semester and it was around this time that he met Leonard Lake. Um, he also was enlisted in the Marine Corps and after one less than one year of service, he was arrested by military police for theft of automatic weapons. Um, facing a court martial, he actually escaped custody in 1980 and made his way back to Northern California where he reunited with Lake. In 1982, federal authorities raided the mobile home that they shared together, um, seizing a large stash of illegal weapons and explosives. Lake was released on a $6,000 bond. He jumped bail and drifted around the state using a series of pseudonyms. Now, in 1984, he was dishonorably discharged after serving time for the theft and desertion, actually. And that was when Lake invited him to share this cabin um, that he was renting. Next to the cabin, Lake had built a structure 
described in his journals as a dungeon. He probably had already murdered his brother Donald and his friend and best man Charles Gunner, stealing their money and Gunner's identity. Over the next year, Lake and NG began a pattern of rape, torture, and murder. Their victims included their neighbor Lonnie Bond, um, his girlfriend Brenda O'Connor, and their infant son Lonnie Jr., and Harvey and Deborah Dubbs and their young son Sean. According to court records, they killed the men and the infants immediately, but kept the women alive, raping and torturing them before murdering them or allowing them to die from their injuries. Other known victims including, included relatives and friends who came looking for Bond and O'Connor, including two gay men and some workmate, excuse me, workmates of NG. Now, NG and Lake's rampage might have gone on longer if not for NG's kleptomania. On the 2nd of June in 1985, NG was caught shoplifting a vice from a South San Francisco hardware store and fled the scene. Lake later drove to the store and attempted to pay for the vice, but by then police had arrived. <clears throat> Excuse me. Officers noted that Lake bore no resemblance to the photo on his driver's license, which carried the name of Robin Stapley, a San Diego man reported missing by his family several weeks earlier. After a gun equipped with a prohibited silencer was found in the trunk of Lake's vehicle, he was arrested and positively identified via fingerprint search. In custody, while awaiting arraignment, Lake swallowed cyanide pills that he had sewn into his clothes and he died four days later. So he never went to trial or was convicted of anything. Um, the license plate on Lake's vehicle was registered to him, but the vehicle itself was registered to Paul Cosner, who had disappeared in November of 1984. Lake's auto registration led detectives to the property that they were renting, uh, where they found Stapley's truck and Bond's car and behind the cabin, the dungeon. In a makeshift burial site nearby, police unearthed roughly 40 pounds of burned and crushed human bone fragments, fragments, excuse me, corresponding to a minimum of 11 bodies. They also found a hand-drawn treasure map, leading them to two buried five-gallon buckets. One contained envelopes with names and victims' IDs, suggesting that the total number of victims might have been as high as 25. In the other bucket were Lake's handwritten journals for the years 1983 and 1984, and two videotapes do documenting the torture of two of their victims. In one of the tapes, NG is seen telling victim Brenda O'Connor, you can cry and stuff like the rest of them, but it won't do any good. We are pretty cold hearted, so to speak. In the other, Deborah Dubbs is shown being assaulted so severely that she could not have survived. NG, meanwhile, had fled to Calgary, Alberta, Canada, where his sister lived. He lived undetected in a uh, Fish Creek Prov Provincial Park, excuse me, until his penchant for theft did him in yet again. On the 6th of July in 1985, he was arrested by the Calgary Police Service after shooting security guard Sean Doyle in the hand while resisting arrest for stealing a can of salmon from a Calgary department store. He was charged and subsequently convicted of shoplifting, shoplifting excuse me, assault with a weapon and possession of a concealed firearm, and he was sentenced to four and a half years in prison. After serving his sentence, he remained incarcerated pending an extradition request from the California authorities. Um, in Cal Calaveras County in California, he was, he was then indicted on 12 counts of first degree murder. He went through a total of 10 attorneys, some of who ended up defending him a second time. Um, he also filed a malpractice suit against several of the attorneys, citing incompetent representation. After claiming that he had lost trust and confidence in all of his lawyers, he was allowed to represent himself, which delayed the trial another year while he researched applicable laws or applicable laws. <clears throat> his trial finally began six years after his extradition in October of 1998. Leonard Lake's wife, um, cooperated with investigators and received legal immunity from prosecution, 
Um, they stated, the court stated that uh, the wife turned over weapons and other material to authorities during the investigation. She was called as a key witness in NG's trial in 1999. Despite the video evidence and information in Lake's uh, diaries, NG maintained that he was merely an observer and that Lake planned and committed all of the kidnappings, rapes, and murders unassisted. He further maintained that he was dependent upon Lake for direction and that the abuse that he suffered at the hands of his father was a mitigating factor and that his good behavior behind bars showed that he should be imprisoned for life rather than executed. A psychiatrist actually testified that NG had dependent personality disorder, but admitted under cross-examination that he had not viewed the tapes that showed NG um, participating in the crimes. Another criminal psychologist agreed with the diagnosis of dependent personality disorder and stated that, that NG's uh, behavior in the tapes indicated that he was attempting to mirror and please Lake. Four prison guards, two sheriff deputies, and a prison library employee, as well as a prison counselor, all testified that NG was a model prisoner. Four former Marines who had known him while serving in the Marines testified that he was quiet and well-behaved. His parents both testified about his troubled childhood and expressed remorse for their son's actions. However, in February of 99, NG was convicted of 11 of the 12 homicides, six men, three women, and two male infants. Uh, jurors deadlocked on the 12th charge. He was sentenced to death, and the presiding judge rejected a motion to reduce the jury's verdict to life imprisonment. He is quoted to have said, Mr. NG was not under any duress, nor does the evidence support that he was under the domination of Leonard Lake. Um, NG's prosecution cost the state of attorney, excuse me, the state of California approximately $20 million. At the time, the most expensive trial in the state's history. As of July of 2019, he does remain on death row in San Quentin State Prison and no executions have taken place in California since 2006, which is probably why. So yeah, that's a horrific story. I'm very glad that the, uh, that the jury didn't hold back on um, convicting him because of his claim of being dependent on Lake because he, according to the tapes, he very much was involved and regardless of how dependent you are, you still did the crime. So um, I'm glad to hear that justice was served in that aspect, but it's really sad to know that there could have been more victims out there who have not received justice and their families may never know if they were really victims of these two or not. Um, thank you again for the request. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button below. If you have any suggestions for videos, true crime or otherwise, please leave those in the comments below. If you guys want to see more videos, please hit the subscribe button. I upload new videos every Wednesday. And other than that, I will hopefully see you guys next week, um, if not the week after, something like that.